I, I heard about Nina long before I met her. Uh, and not just by reputation, but by, uh, from Ed Zwick and Marshall Herskovitz, who I had known for years. And from the, because I was in 30 something, yeah, with them. And, and, but also I knew them. I had met Ed uh, back in 1981, I think it was, when my then wife and I had just moved to Santa Monica Canyon. And we got on the, a knock on the door, and it was Ed standing there with his dog. And he said, uh, you have a dog, I have a dog, let's do doggy daycare. <laughs> and uh, we became fast friends after that uh, and met Marshall and Richard Kramer and this whole group of people who all kept talking about Nina Fosh. Because they had studied with her at uh, AFI, I think it was at the time. And um, I sort of didn't pay much attention to it at the time. I was mainly acting and sort of just starting to head towards directing. And then when 30-something actually happened, it, it was something I, would, I was living in on a daily basis. It was always Nina said this, and this is how Nina did, did that. And so finally, as I was becoming, you know, as directing was really t becoming my, my focus, I, uh, I decided to meet her and start trying to study with her. And so I, I started taking one-on-one -on -one classes with her, um, which is I think, you know, from what I've been able to see from her experience in the classroom situation, it's, it's a much more intense experience. <laughs> if you're in a classroom, you had the, you know, the safety of the herd. Uh, and Nina was a force, you know, Nina had such alacrity and vitality to her. And, you know, walking into a room with her and sitting down one-on-one -on -one for an hour was just exhausting. Because um, she, as, as some other people have said in, in your uh, depictions of her that she's got real tough love. I mean, it was there was she demanded an attention and a focus and a, and a clarity to the process in front of you that you just didn't dare let you know let go of um, or take a break from. You had to really focus with her when you were one on one. And uh, she, what she did for me, um, not only as a director but as an actor and as a writer. Um, was really, she provided the keys to really unlocking the engine behind storytelling in all three disciplines. Um, she had this way of getting somehow underneath it to the ineffable part of it, which we all strive for. You know, when a writer sits down to write, what we're trying to describe are those things that we, we, we have trouble describing. That's why we're writers. Um, when you're directing, you're trying to take those words and find what is, what is the, the life behind them, what is true, the experience behind them, and how do you convey that to an actor. And as an actor, you're trying to do the same. And, and it was absolutely uh, game-changing for me. Um, she, she really got me to, to the point where I, I not only could get to that part of the experience and the underlying truth of it, but that I really could see that there was one, even. You know, before that, all of that was more intuitive than it was conscious. Um, and those tools that she taught me, the, the intentions behind every line and the, the, the actions behind it all, I have used consistently and daily ever since. Um, in fact, there was, there's, there's a, uh, one anecdotal experience which I think is, is really useful for this, which is, uh, my first movie, in fact, the only movie I've directed so far, is a, is a movie called The Cure, uh, which is for Universal Studios. And it was Annabella Sciorra and Rad Renfro and Joe, Joey Mazzello. And there was a scene, and, and Nina, I had taken the script to Nina because this was my first film, you know. This was, like, really exciting and terrifying. And we had gone through what she does, each single state, you know, line and found an intention and found, you know, done all of that work. and. And, you know, usually what you do with that work um, is you've done it, and it's in your system, and you forget it. And then you go out there, and it just kind of applies in ways that you don't really expect to predict. But uh, in this one case uh, where, in the movie, Annabella Sciorra plays the mother of this little boy who has AIDS, and he finally has died. And she's with uh, Brad Renfro, and they're coming back from the hospital. And she's, it's a very emotional scene that she has to, you know, has to cry and really fall apart because that's where, a chance for Brad's character to, to comfort her. And at one point, uh, you know, in the middle of shooting, here's the whole crew, the, you know, we're on a camera, we're on a, 
a camera car, and we've got cameras everywhere we're rolling, and Annabella stops in the middle of it and, and says, I need to talk to you. And she comes up and she says, I'm dry. What do I do? And because Nina and I had worked on this very scene, I was able to say to her, call him back, meaning her son, call him back. And it just hit her. And she teared up again, and we went back out and did the scene, and boom, there it was. And, you know, not only was it that I had had the skills now to go back and do that in general, but to have the specific thing right at my fingertips to be able to say right to an actress when an actress had, lo had just lost it, had spent herself, this is a key, um, has always stayed with me. She just had so much life to her uh, and, and so much um, wonderful complexity to her system um, that I'll, I'll always carry her with me wherever I go.